Greetings fellow interlopers, it's Taylor. And just like the thumbnail says, we're talking about how to make your bases suck a little less. Today we're going to be going over how to use a couple switches and make your doors a little more interesting. Let's dive in. What kind of door in space stays open? Yeah, I'm on a paradise planet, and yeah, there is an atmosphere and everything's groovy outside, but what if you're not? What if your base is in a hazardous environment? That door is not staying open. So let's take a look at a couple ways you can implement switches to make your base a little more interesting and to keep that damn door shut. So the first option we're gonna take a look at is the proximity open, which when you approach the door, it will automatically open. And when you get to a certain distance away from it, it will shut. This is kind of my preferred method, but we'll look at some other ones. For this, we're gonna need a couple switches. So we're gonna go into our build menu and you're gonna wanna go under the section with the symbol just to the left of the chair. You know that, uh, uh, I don't actually know what the hell that symbol's supposed to be, but it's just to the left of the chair. Then you're just gonna wanna scroll down and select the proximity switch. I'm gonna put it here just for the sake of this video. There's nothing wrong with putting it right on the door. I just will hide it and I'll show you what I do after we go through it here. The next switch you're gonna want is the power inverter. When we take a look at the switches side by side, you can see that the proximity switch on the bottom has just two input outputs and the power inverter has three. Don't worry about all these connections. We're gonna go through it step by step. You will need electricity for this, so whatever methods you like to use. I've got power running to my keyboard room, so I'll just pull from that. So if we take a look at the power inverter, you can see on the left side, there are green lights. On the right side, there are red lights. Those are the two that we wanna worry about right now. So pull a wire from the green side down to the door. These doors have two inputs on the inside and two inputs on the outside. You can choose whatever input you want to use. For this type of door, it doesn't matter. So the input on the right side, that's the side we're going to hook up to our power source. Okay, now we move on to the proximity switch. You can pick a side and drag that to your power source. Alright, we're almost there. So on the other side of the proximity switch, we're going to drag that up to the only remaining input that's not in use on the power inverter. In this case, it's the one on the bottom. And voila! We now have an automatic door that opens and closes based on our proximity. Alright, so now we're going to take a quick look at how I like to hide these switches, either underneath some flooring, or if it's near the ground, I'll just use a terrain manipulator to make a little hole, put the switches in, hook all my wiring up, and then I'll just use the terrain manipulator to repair the hole. Don't worry, the grass will grow back. So what I normally do is I'll put my proximity switch and eyeball it just right underneath the door. And I'll put my power inverter somewhat close. Now we'll just go through the same process as before. The green side of the power inverter goes to the door and the other side goes to power. Now the proximity switch, one side goes to power and the other goes to the unused connector on the inverter. And there we go. That is a proper door behaving how it should. Or maybe you're a little old fashioned and you'd like to open and close the door with a switch. If that's the case, you just go back to our favorite menu and select wall switch. Now the wiring is a little different than what we did last time. Once you place your wall switch on the outside, one side will go to power and the other will go to the side that it's on. Whereas before it didn't matter what door connection you used. So here we're going to pull it to the outside because the switch is on the outside. And it's as simple as that. You walk up, you toggle the power flow, and the door opens. Well, the problem now is that the door will remain open until it's activated again. So you would need to make an internal switch. So we'll put another wall switch here. So same as before, we're just going to drag one side to power and the other is going to go on the inside because the switch is on the inside. So this is good if you prefer a little more interactivity with your base, but I do prefer the proximity switch. Just a whole lot easier. And this exact same setup can be used with the power door. 
If only we had a door big enough for the Exocraft. That would make a very cool garage door. Well, next up is just using internal lighting with proximity switches. It also adds a nice layer of interactivity that you don't have to do anything for. All of these switches are hidden underneath the flooring. It's the only switch you need as well. Since it has two input outputs, one side will go to your power source and the other side will go into your light. That will do it for this edition of How to Make Your Bases Suck Less. This is Taylor from Whiskey Barrel Gaming reminding you to have an S-Class day.